think I was just uh, uh, curious to pick your brain on on, on how you attacked uh, that game plan on Saturday. And it seemed like Jack with the first start and all, a lot of short passes, especially the exterior. But um, what this program has been able to rely on a lot the last few years is like WAP in the slot, where you always had a slot guy kind of open in the middle a lot. And haven't seen as much of that. Is that something that's uh, been lacking for any specific reason, or is it something you want to try to do more of in regards to going forward, in regards to game planning and scheming? Um, I think each each week's a little bit different on you know where you're trying to attack. Um, you know, I thought early in the game, try to get Jack off to a good start and get in some good rhythm. Um, I thought he was able to do that. Um, you know, really Saturday, I think we're in the throw game at least, is we just missed some opportunities on some balls down the field. You know, we we had some one-on-ones in the deep part of the field, whether it was an inside receiver. I know Ty early in the game ran, you know, an inside fade route in the slot, and we just we didn't connect on it. Um, we had Javon down the sideline a few times, Miles. So I would say in the past game relative to that, um, you know, your point's well taken as far as, you know, some of the inside receivers on some of the crossers and those types of things that I know WAP had a lot of success with. Um, but you're trying to cater to the players that you do have um, each year. Each group is a little bit different. And when I look back at the game on Saturday, I just thought we missed some opportunities in the deep part of the field. You know, that was really, um, you know, there was just some missed op opportunities, you know, whether it was a throw, um, you know, being able to come down with it. We drew a couple PIs, you know, we're, we're able to get some some one-on-ones there and, and our guys fought for the ball, but um, we got to be able to hit those. You know, those are explosive plays and those lead to points. So I didn't necessarily think, um, you know, there was a ton of opportunities. There were some shorter intermediate throws to the tight ends that we probably could have hit that we didn't, um, but there wasn't a, a handful of them. Like I said, the things where I felt in the past game, we just missed some opportunities with some one-on-ones on the perimeter. Yeah, uh, Coach, the wide receiver screens, um, are they being blocked the way you want them to be blocked? Because it seemed like a lot of them were getting tackled, you know, out or near the line of scrimmage, short games, or are there? Yeah, there's, there's a combination of things there. Um, I thought there was some really good perimeter blocking on Saturday at times. Um, some of that also has to deal with the quarterback's decision um, on when to throw it out there and when not to. Also, the location of the football to allow the runner to, to catch in advance. So I think there was a combination of things. There was a few missed, um, you know, we didn't block it as well as we would have liked or to the right people. There was a couple where I thought the quarterbacks could, could have not thrown the ball out there and or thrown the ball more accurately. Um, so there was, a, there was a little bit of both of that. Um, but you're trying to get the ball on the edge. Um, you know, put your guys in space and, and get the ball out there. Um, we just need to be a little bit more consistent with that. But I thought there was some production as well in, in some of those. Um, but we need to be better. We heard uh, Coach Allen talk a lot about Donovan and kind of maybe removing, at least for the moment, sort of the, the idea of restricting him to just the four games. But from your perspective, not just as coordinator, but as QB's coach, what's different in the way that you kind of approach him day to day in practice when you're thinking of him maybe less as a, a scout team guy, a long term developmental guy, and more as, okay, Donovan, this is what the, the game plan is for this weekend and, and it's not just for you, maybe a small handful of change of pace plays. It's you need to be ready for all of this. I think that's a good question. I think the challenge with him is, you know, not only are you developing a few packaged plays for him, but you're also trying to get him caught up to speed on what the game plan is regardless of who the quarterback is. And so there's balance to that because the, the guys that aren't getting one reps, regardless of the position, they need to be able to execute the game plan. If Jack's, Jack is in the game, you know, you can't just have the next group of offensive players only rep you know, your packaged plays for certain players. So that's been a process. Obviously, we'll modify if he's in the game for an extensive period of time and the plays that he feels most comfortable with. Not too long ago, he was getting minimal reps, you know, relative to what we were doing in the game plan. So that, that's that been a process, but he's handling it. And, um, you know, we, we expect big things for him um, in, the, in his future. He's a very talented kid. He cares a whole bunch. Um, Self-admittedly, a little nervous out there to start the game which I can imagine, but, um, you know, and he tried to run directly at a guy. You know, we're trying to get him to maybe pick an edge there and not try to run over somebody, but um, he's just a young kid out there trying to do the best he can. And he's a great kid, comes from a great family, has a lot of talent, and so we're trying to coach him and bring him along as quickly as we can. Hey, Coach. 
Uh, obviously, one offensive touchdown, first three Big Ten games. What do you feel are the biggest issues that have caused those numbers to be what they are? Yeah, there's really uh, a couple main points. Uh, number one, our quarterbacks have turned the ball over too much, period. Um, that's pretty evident to everybody. So that can't happen. That's led to us losing games. We've turned the football over too much. Number two is we haven't scored touchdowns in the red zone. And it's really um, – not that much more complicated than that. You know, we've had opportunities in the red area and we haven't scored touchdowns. And ultimately, you know, that leads to points. I think the explosive plays have not been what we want it to be. And those are really the two factors when you're talking about points and production in that regard. Um, you know, we've had moments, we've moved the ball, we've gotten first downs, but when you're talking about putting points on the board, you have to have explosive plays and you have to score and finish drives in the red area. and. We just have not done that. And so, um, you know, it's not for a lack of trying or, um, you know, problem solving, but it just hasn't come to light, you know, in games. And we got to do a better job. And if we were able to do that on one drive Saturday, we would have won the game. You know, we had an opportunity to, to win, but we didn't. And so um, we need to be better there as a staff, as players, and find a way to score touchdowns in the red area and not turn the ball over like we have at the quarterback position. Nick, you've obviously been pretty forthright when we've done these things about taking blame and responsibility when things haven't gone well. I guess a lot of people obviously have opinions on what they think you're doing wrong or not. But I guess when you watch them, what, what do you beat yourself up of? What do you look at and say, man, Nick, you got to do better here? I, I really don't beat myself up too much. You're just critical. You know, you just look for areas where you could improve or put the players in better positions to make plays. And it's always a collective. It's always we. It's never, you know, one person, one player, one coach. Um, certainly when you're responsible and the coordinator, I mean, you, you shoulder that burden, you understand that. But, um, you know, the criticism or the critique always comes inside out. You know, we, we look at it and how we could be better. And we recognize that there's a lot of good plays, too, that we made, you know, whether it be a call, a scheme, an execution, a great effort by a player, whatever it may be. So there's always a combination of that, you know, when you look at a game. And I think – you know, to your question and, and to your point, you know, if we were to score a few more touchdowns in the red area, you'd feel a lot better. You'd feel different. Um, it's never good enough, right? Every coach will tell you that. There's always things to work on. There's always things to improve. But certainly those glaring issues, um, they need to get corrected. You know, we need to score touchdowns when we get down there. And if we're able to do that, then the point production will go up, you know. And so that's really the focus. And um, in those moments when you evaluate it, you look at a lot of things, you know, whether – the call, the scheme, the execution, all those things, and, and who's responsible, who, how can you fix that problem, how can you correct it, how can you do better moving forward. So um, that happens every week. We got to see Donovan, but only in running situations. How has he looked passing the ball? Have you seen progression from him? And just evaluate him as a passer. I think he's a talented passer, a little inconsistent, working on that each and every day. I think there's, there's a couple layers when you're a young quarterback. Um, you know, sometimes young quarterbacks can look inaccurate when they're not totally sure what they're doing. You know, they're not fully confident in what the read is, what the drop is, the timing of that. I think he's made progress. You know, I think he's a talented kid. He has a strong arm. He is accurate. It's just making sure that he feels comfortable in those moments um, on a lot of things, the protection, the read, the throw, et cetera. But um, he's making progress every day, and I think the sky's the limit for him. Um, and certainly – you know, moving forward, if he's in the game, you know, he can't just run the ball every time that he's in there. So he knows that. Um, but we got to execute those plays as well. So, um, but we expect him to be able to do that. And I know um, he's excited to just continue to grow, continue to develop, and continue to get better. Okay, thanks, guys.